Let's show you how to add reverb to the end of your songs. That will take this. It ain't my fault that I'm in control. When I'm on track, I'm lose control. And turn it into this. It ain't my fault that I'm in control. When I'm on track, I'm lose control. So today we're going to be adding this reverb effect at the end of the song, and you can do it all within Premiere Pro. The first example, as you can see by the audio waveforms, it kind of just dies out and there's nothing after it. And the second example that you heard, there was this reverb effect that just kind of played out. Now this effect is super simple to do, so let's just jump into Premiere and show you how to do it. And if you guys want more videos like this, please click that thumbs up and subscribe because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. Now I'd recommend having your song end on a hit, a bang, or a vocal note. And I've kind of end on lose control as my reverb point. So let's take a listen. It ain't my fault that I'm in control. When I'm on track, I'm lose control. As you can hear, it kind of just ends right here. But what if we want to actually extend this out and reverb it? Well, all you have to do is find the point that you want to start the reverb. So I think I'm gonna start right there like on the troll of control. And then all you have to do is click C on your keyboard, make a cut, and then right click on the back half of your audio layer and head on up to nest. And then just click okay. And all you wanna do is go to the effects tab and type in reverb and drag on studio reverb. Now if you play that back, well, it doesn't really do anything because the reverb is very minute and it still ends. So what we need to do is actually double click on your nested layer and then head on over to your project bin and right click new item and you can drag on anything, but I found that black video works for me. And then all you have to do is drag that into your nested sequence and it can be over the top of everything and just drag that out so it's like, I don't know, like 10, 20 seconds and then head on back to your sequence. Now what we can do is actually drag out our nested sequence for as long as we want the reverb to last. So let's drag it out to like right there and give this a listen. So you're starting to hear that we now have reverb, but let's modify it a little bit. Select on your nested audio layer and head up to edit. Now in here, you can come in here and just do vocal reverb large, give that a listen. So, I mean, that's pretty good. If you wanna do some modifications, you can, like by increasing the delay. If you increase that all the way up to 10,000, it's just never gonna go away. And I tend to keep my high frequency cut a little bit higher and my low frequency cut a little bit lower. So it sounds a little bit beefier. And I like to keep my dry up all the way up to the top and my wet around 70%. But again, play around with everything. I said 10,000 earlier, but typically I like keeping this around 5,000. I found that works best for me. So now we have this. It has just enough reverb, but let's modify it a little bit more. Let's say we want to make this sound go away. Like we don't want the reverb because once we get to the end, it's gonna just cut off. All you have to do is right click on the end of your nested audio layer and click apply default transition. Now you can just drag that out and that's basically a constant power, which is a fade. So it sounds like this. When I'm on track, I'm lose control. So it fades away, but you're starting to hear like a little blip or like a little uh, issue with the audio thing. So you can play around with your audio layer and actually fade it out as well to get a different feel. So that sounds a little bit smoother and I actually like how that sounds. Lastly, I wanted to show you that you can actually play around with different effects as well. So there is something called analog delay. And if you drag that onto your nested audio layer and go into the edit menu and head on down to triplet refrain under presets. Now let's give that a listen. It sounds absolutely horrible. So all you have to do is increase your delay to let's say 650, that works. We're gonna increase our dry out to like 90% and decrease your wet out to let's say 5%. And then your feedback, let's just drop it down to like 25% and increase our spread a little bit. And it sounds like this. So now you have an analog delay with reverb. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you did, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I'll be making some more stuff in the future. Peace.